This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals is tonight. As the Edmonton Oilers try to try to complete their comeback against the Florida Panthers. Panthers trying to lift the cup and thwart that instead. We got Tom Vecchio here today to break down his thoughts on Game 7. Favorite bets in FanDuel, Sportsbook, and more to end your NHL season on a high note. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Vecchio, find him on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Check out his work over at FanDuel Research, including over on the solo shot on Mondays and Tuesdays on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. Tom, it is game seven tonight. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, this is, without exaggeration, one of the most important games in the history of the NHL. Uh, a team has a chance to win their first Stanley Cup with the Panthers. They are also trying to prevent the Oilers from coming back. 3-0, which hasn't happened in 82 years. Also, the Oilers trying to be the first Canadian team to win the Stanley Cup in 31 years. Like, this is one of the biggest games in the history of the league. It's going to be awesome tonight. And how are you feeling? Because I know you got those Panthers tickets from out there. So it's been a, a roller coaster for you, it right. seems like. Well, uh, prior to Friday night, I was thinking, do I hedge? Because I had the Panthers minus one and a half. I have the Panthers on the series. And Panthers win, a, win 4-2. And I ultimately decided not to let it roll. So... Two of those are donezo. We're <laughs> rolling with the Panthers. You know, I theoretically could hedge you out to try and make back the two that I just lost, but I'm just letting it roll at this point. Whatever happens, happens. It's been a great season. Uh, we just got to move on. Yeah, and we're going to break down that Game 7 for tonight here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We're here Monday through Friday talking uh, betting and or betting uh, – across all kinds of sports tomorrow we're talking some wnba commissioner's cup is tomorrow night we'll talk about that with annie nader and also break down some thursday games in the wnba a lot more good stuff coming up later on this week usc pay-per-view we've got some euro stuff coming up all right here in the same podcast so you just search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcast hit subscribe if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating and review as well grand slams no hitters and double plays are back and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That is 200 bucks to use on money lines, totals, strikeouts, homers, you name it, or combine your bets in the same game parlay for a chance at an even bigger payout, all in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in President select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sports sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, D.C., and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 for chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-A-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Tom, let's dig in here to Game 7. The Oilers have scored five-plus goals in now three consecutive games, evening up this series. So I want to ask you, if you're the Panthers, what adjustments can you make to try to put a lid on that scoring outburst? You know, that's a great question because it, it necessarily it hasn't necessarily been one thing. We've seen the Oilers score shorthanded goals. They've had odd man rushes. They've had defensive breakdowns. Like all the things you would think that they have ironed out at this point in the season in the most important games of the year. Now they're having like the flaws are showing now. And again, I, I talked about like McDavid, you only can hold them contained for so long, but they're getting production from elsewhere. So 
obviously number one would be take fewer penalties. And then it has to be the most bare bones, simple, uh, fundamental game from the Panthers. I guess you could say like getting odd man rushes and allowing scoring chances when the Oilers are shorthanded is like a Cardinal sit at any point in the year, let alone the, the Stanley cup. So it just has to come down to that fundamental game of making clean passes, exiting the zone properly, getting up the boards, like not delaying all those things for them to have a shot to right the ship after three disastrous games, essentially. And it sounds like a lot of that could be fluky stuff. They don't expect to continue. You, you would right. hope, you know, as again, as someone with, with a Panthers ticket, you would hope that would be the case, but it's, this fluky stuff can continue, especially when it's snow snowballs kind of the way this has gone so far. So I want to ask you, Tom, let, let's say you don't have your Panthers tickets. Oh, who are you betting to win it all for tonight? If I didn't have uh, any exposure to anyone, it would have to be the Oilers. I, I think there's, there's too much pressure on the Panthers. As we've, like you said, like the snowballing of fluky events where like, yeah, the fluky events are never going to sustain themselves over an 82 game season. But like, a player can hit a home run four or five games in a row. He's never going to hit him 162 games where like scoring shorthand goals happens and it can happen a couple of games in a row as we've seen. And that could certainly continue tonight because I, I think the pressure on the Panthers is so, I don't want to say insurmountable at this point, but if they get off to a slow start, we are going to see a snowball effect in favor of the Oilers because at that point, the Panthers will have to take more chances. Their D will have to pinch down the boards. They're going to overexpose themselves to those uh, odd man rushes against them. So roll with the Oilers tonight. If you, if you have no exposure and this is your first time betting the Stanley Cup, just roll with the Oilers and the momentum that they have. Yeah, the Oilers' money line right now is minus 106 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, the Panthers are a minus 113. There's been a bit of tightening in that money line uh, since yesterday morning. So it does seem like there's been some Oilers' money coming in. Now, the total in this series, in this game, is pretty low. It's at five and a half, plus 126 on the over as of right now. And that's despite seeing a bunch of goals here recently. So, Tom, any chance that scoring continues, or will the intensity of a game seven justify having minus 154 on the under right now? I think both things can be true. Where I think the minus 154, it goes to minus 160. I think that is absolutely justified for game seven. But also the scoring and the game ending four to two with an empty net goal, I think is very firmly on the table. You know, seeing a three to two game, given what we've seen, especially over the last three game stretch specifically, I think that is very realistic where it's back and forth. Maybe one team pulls ahead and then an empty net pushes it to six total goals. So ideally, I would actually like to see the line shift to, to more money over five and a half because then you could buy the six and that would be a little bit more reasonable. You can find sixes out there, but it's like minus 215. So if you could find a under six at minus 150, minus 160, that's where I'd be comfortable going. But I just don't know if we'll get there by puck drop at 8 p.m. So what you're saying is no interest for you on the over. Right. You only want an under if you get a better price on it later on. Correct. And and that's just one of the things where it's like, just because I want it doesn't mean the market will, right. it's going to be out there in the market. So it might just be like, hey, we don't have it. So it's it's a no bet. Like we we can't force it. I don't want to force it on the last game of the season. I want to end on a high note. Exactly. So let's just not force it. And we might just have to sit on the sidelines, at least for a total tonight. Okay. So keep tabs on where the total goes right now for this game. See if you can see a number, uh, if you can get an all market or at six goals, see where that is. And if you can get a good number on that, potentially bite there. But as of right now, it sounds like it is a stay away for the right. total in this game. What about player props, Tom? What are you seeing there for game seven? So player props are, are really tough for this game. And, you know, I wrote about Zach Hyman under three and a half goals uh, on Friday when they played. It was minus 154, I think it was. And he hit that. And despite him being a super high volume shooter overall in the season, overall in playoffs, we just haven't seen any player do that. So his number tonight is under three and a half minus 170, which is a bit of a stretch for me. I would say shop around to find the best line. So if you can find a better line on Hyman under three and a half at minus 150 ish, I'm on board with that. If you scroll up a little bit to Matthew Kachuk, his line is two and a half. However, if you look across the market, you can find under three and a half and minus 166. So that's something I have interest in. So again, this is, you know, you have to use the marketplace to your advantage. And I would look for under three and a half on uh, Matthew Kachuk as is now minus 166. And Hyman, if you can get a little bit of a better number on under three and a half. 
So look around on both Kachuk and Hyman, looking for unders on both those. And what leads to the under? What leads to the expectation of less shot volume overall in this game? Well, it's also just a a, a trend that we've been seeing, but this is the time where teams are far west, uh, far less willing to, like I said, you know, the D's pinch down the board, and that means there's if they're not pinching down the boards, there's going to be extra or there's going to be um, how do I put this? If they're pinching down the boards there's going to be less second chances. So they're, the teams are going to be clearing the puck more effectively. So they're not going to be getting these second and third chances with the four check. So that's going to lead to less sustained offensive pressure and the shots are going to become few and far between. So I don't actually maybe not look for forwards. You can actually look to D for shot props, maybe Evan Bouchard over two and a half, just because they're going to get anything to the net that they can rather than actually some high quality chances. The shots will rather come from the blue line rather than actually close to the net. Okay, so check around on Hyman. I hope all that makes sense. It did. Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, so check around on Hyman. Check around on Kachuk. See what numbers you can get under three and a half on both those guys. You can get around minus 150 or so, minus 160 for Kachuk. Then those could be bettable numbers for Tom. Right. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work over on the FanDuel Research podcast feed and over at FanDuel Research. Tom, enjoy game seven tonight. Rooting for that Panthers ticket for you. And we'll talk to you once again in the very near future for some baseball down the line. Thanks for having me. Alrighty, again, you can find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Before we close up for this week, do got to go through recommendations from last week here on the show. Let's begin things by wrapping up the NBA Finals. We talked about that with both Tom and Austin Swain. Austin is on Twitter at Swain 3 Austin had the Celtics and Mavs under five and a half games. I believe this was entering game four. He had that under five and a half games, minus 152, and of course, did finish with just five total games overall. So a winner there for Austin Celtics Mavericks under five and a half games at minus 152. Austin also did mention entering game number five. He had interest in Drew Holiday, 38 to 1, to win finals MVP. He could not get there, but uh, Holiday did put up some good numbers in game five. Couldn't quite get there, but overall, uh, interesting number there for, for, uh, for Austin. Didn't get there with Holiday, but Tom did get there with Jalen Brown. We talked about Tom before the series began. He liked Jalen Brown 7 to 1 to win NBA finals MVP. And of course, Brown did get that job done. So a nice winner there for Tom. Jalen Brown 7 to 1 to win finals MVP. The other series level price that Tom had for Mavericks and Celtics was the Mavericks plus one and a half games at minus 134. And of course, they did lose four to one. So couldn't quite get that one with the Jalen Brown ticket more than covering us across the NBA finals. So thank you to Tom for that. We had Dr. Ed Fang on last week to break down the Euro 2024 uh, uh, matches the upcoming weekend. The one that he had this weekend was Germany, Switzerland over two and a half goals at minus 128. And kind of a tough match across the board. Not a lot of fouls called. Uh, there was one on Musiala that I thought could have been called at some point, but uh, no dice there. And if it was just two goals total, uh, draw there one to one between Germany and Switzerland. So no winner there on over two and a half goals at minus 128. We're going to have uh, Ed on next week. He is on vacation for this week. So enjoy your vacation, Ed. Find Ed on X at the Power Rank and check him out at the PowerRank.com as well. I talked NASCAR and Formula One this past week. Let's start things off with NASCAR. They were up in New Hampshire and uh, got good movement on all these, but none of them cashed. I had Chase Elliott to win 14 to 1. Uh, that closed a plus 750. It was because qualifying got rained out. Now he started the poll. He started the race off okay, but he was not the best car. That was very clearly Christopher Bell. And Bell got the win there. So good movement, but movement does not pay the bills on that one. I had Bubba Wallace top 5 plus 550 and top 10 plus 170. Wallace was running you know, in the teens for most of the day and then got wrecked later on. Uh, once they were on the rain tires, he was not very happy about that. So didn't feel like I deserved to win that one either way, even though he was running roughly in the teens the entire day. Final one was Daniel Suarez top 10 at five to one. Suarez was trash this entire race. Uh, dropped like a rock when the green flag fell. It closed three to one, but that doesn't matter. It was because of uh, qualifying getting rained out. So dropped like a rock during the race. It was brutal. So no winners there across NASCAR. And Formula One had two recommendations. The first one being Lando Norris to win at plus 490. Lando won the pole. So he closed, I think, at around plus one. 40 or so to win the race uh, beat out Max Verstappen for pole just barely but Lando did not get a good start and got passed by both Verstappen and George Russell Lando went a bit different in the strategy trying to run long and run down Verstappen and he had a very good car uh, he thinks and Verstappen thinks that it was the better car than McLaren this weekend 
but it also could have been because Verstappen had a lead and can kind of conserve and not push himself too hard. Lando did cut down the gap to Verstappen to two seconds by the end, but could not get the win there. A plus four ninety did get a win though with Pierre Gasly. I had Gasly three to one to score points. Uh, we talked about that in the FanDuel Research betting guide when it was plus four ten. Talked about it here on the show at three to one. Still a value there at twenty nine percent for me. Gasly was fifth, I believe, in FP two on Friday. Uh, qualified inside the top ten and ran there the entire race, finished there as well, finished ninth. His teammate, Esteban Ocon, scored points too, had that one in the FanDuel Research betting guide as well at plus 410. So good week for Alpine, good week for Gasly, as the Gasly ticket does cash at 3-1 to one for Formula 1. Of course, there is a triple header for Formula 1, so uh, they are in action this week and then next week as well. So a lot of good stuff on the Formula 1 side of things coming up on the show over the next two weeks. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio for swinging by to break down Game 7. Find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio 1. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. As mentioned tomorrow, Andy Nader will join the show breaking down the WNBA Commissioner's Cup. Got to see if my links can pull that off. We'll break down that. Plus the Thursday WNBA games as well with Annie coming up later on this week. Got some USC, got some Euro, Formula One. On NASCAR all along the way. We'll talk to all of you again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 